Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast today. I absolutely love bringing to you every single week some of the biggest experts, authors, and entrepreneurs on the planet. Super successful people doing amazing things out in the world so that you can learn, you can know, and you can grow by listening along to my conversations. I meet a lot of amazing people in my line of work, and I love to give you access to them right here on the podcast every single episode. I am really excited about my guest today. Recently, I spoke at an event down in Texas called FinCon, and I was hanging out with some friends, and one of the people I was hanging out with came over to me and said, Shane Sams, you have got to meet Lauren Grootman. Lauren Grootman is a TV personality. You may have seen her on the Today Show, on Rachel Ray. She's been on Dr. Oz. She's been on so many national television shows, it's ridiculous. She is a highly sought-after television spokesperson, television show guest, and she has an incredibly popular financial blog over at laurengrootman.com. I got to hang out with Lauren for hours with a bunch of friends of ours. After I got done speaking, we all got together. We went and had an amazing barbecue dinner at this place in Austin, Texas called Terry Black's. Man, I ate so much food. I think I'm still stuffed from that one. And then we all went to this little cigar kind of lounge. I absolutely loved uh, once a quarter as a little celebration. Go smoke me a nice cigar. Maybe pour me just a little bit of that Kentucky bourbon to go with it. And I love to just hang out with friends. I love to talk to people. Cigars are an amazing thing because it takes a really long time to consume the cigar. You've got to pay attention to it so the fire doesn't go out and it really slows down time it slows down the world it lets you have deep meaningful conversations while you wait for it to burn and you got to shut up so you can keep that thing lit and then you got to give space uh, for your friends to go talk and then they have to do the exact same there's just back and forth this amazing thing that happens uh <laughs> when you smoke an occasional cigar. And I got to hang out with Lauren and four or five other people. And we stayed up really, really late. And we just talked. And it was just such an amazing conversation. I was like, listen, I've got to have you on the podcast. Uh, you're one of the most fascinating people I've met in years. So on today's podcast, we're going to cover a lot of amazing topics. We're going to talk about how you can get on TV. Like, how does somebody become a TV personality? How does somebody become a TV spokesperson? How can you take advantage of those accidental moments that move you forward toward television and then be strategic about how to leverage those opportunities for your business, your brand, and all the things that you're doing for yourself. We're going to talk about how having a blog and having a website and having an online presence, whether it's a blog or a YouTube channel or a podcast, or maybe all three can create countless opportunities for you to grow whatever it is you're doing. We're going to talk about balancing being a parent and being an entrepreneur. And how do we, especially as a public figure, how do we keep our kids' wants and needs in mind when they're a part of our story, they're a part of our life, but maybe they don't want to be on TV. They don't want to be on social media. Like, how do we tell our story and honor our kids' story as well? And finally, we're going to talk about the power of debt-free living. We're going to remove the shame from being in debt today. We're going to talk about a healthy perspective about debt, debt-free living, and how being debt-free can help you grow your business, can help your family have a better future, can maybe break some of the chains that are holding you back in your life. Man, I have a lot of fun recording the Shane Sam show, but I'll tell you what, this is definitely one of the funnest episodes, the funnest conversations I've ever had on the program. I know you're going to love it. So wherever you're listening in, maybe grab you a notebook and a pen, take some notes, turn that radio dial up. If you're in your cars, blasting this through your speakers, or maybe you're out on a walk. Thanks for taking me with you today. Wherever you're listening, settle in, grab a cup of coffee, maybe pour yourself a mason jar of sweet tea, have fun and enjoy the show. Two, one. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Shane. <laughs> we've, we've been having too much fun, and I had to stop us because I'm like, stop. Good banter. We're losing all the good banter. I know, we're how, losing it. How are you doing I'm today? Good. How are you? I'm glad to be here. I, I'm pumped up whenever I look across the screen, and I see one, a friend who I had an amazing time with. Like, I will talk about that a little bit, but like also seeing the same microphone. We got the ATR 2100X Club going on here, right? So yes. That, that is the sign of great entrepreneurs who love sound quality and are also frugal. <laughs> Very frugal. And I'm like, I'm not spending that much money on a microphone. I'm just eight hundred dollars for a Heil. Y'all crazy around here. Mm -hmm. You know what yep, I'm saying? Nope. Yeah, um, frugal to the bone here. Man, we had a uh, it's so funny how we met. Like I love meeting I love meeting friends through friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was speaking at FinCon 
And uh, I was hanging around with Monica Louie, who's been on this podcast before. Right. And uh, she's like, you got to meet Lauren Grootman. You got to meet her. You got to meet her. And then, uh, and then like, it was so cool to meet you. And then uh, we got to all go hang out at an amazing cigar shop or yep. a cigar like club. And uh, that was like one of the like top funnest nights I've had in like three years. I'm not going to lie. It was so fun and so relaxing and so chill. Yeah, I it was a great time. Awesome. So let's go back a little bit because we got to hang out, but uh, I want to introduce you to everybody and I want to talk a little bit about your story, but tell everybody real quick just about you and like kind of what you're doing like right now. Yeah. So my name is Lauren Grootman and I, uh, I'm a personal finance educator at laurengrootman.com. Um, I'm also a professional spokesperson and a lifestyle TV expert. So um, for the past 11 years, I've been teaching people how to get out of debt and budget, all that fun stuff. Um, and uh, you know, I have my own podcast called Hard Money Talks. Um, and I do a lot of national television and spokesperson work around personal finance topics. So I don't know. I'm I'm a single mom of four. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a hustler. <laughs> I like to You are a hustler. I, <laughs> you get after it. I mean, you get after it, you know. I I I watch you and I'm like, what what how, why she's in what city? Is she's on Zoom? How's she on TV? Where did she fix her hair? What time did she wake up? Like I don't understand. Like tell me tell me real quick like what is a TV spokesperson and mm-hmm. then how is that related to like the TV personality stuff where you go on like Good Morning America or or stuff like that. But what what do you mean a spokesperson? Do you do like ad spots and things? Yeah. So, okay. So there's a couple different things. So uh, companies hire me to be their professional spokesperson to do all of their national television. So Mm. a company will hire me. And so instead of going on the Today Show as Lauren Gertman from laurengertman.com, I'll go on, you know, let's say I worked for this um, app called Flip for three years and I went on as the Flip Savings Expert, you know, Lauren Gertman Flip Savings Expert. So I went on on behalf of their company. Um, and then I help them create all of their messaging, refine all their messaging. I do all of their, um, media, uh, interviews. So if like a magazine needs an interview, if a radio needs an interview, I do all of their press for them on their behalf. So that's different than a lifestyle TV expert. So for lifestyle TV, I do, I go on there on my own behalf. So I go on there to teach, um, you know, I go on the Today Show, I go on the Rachel Ray Show, and I, I work directly with the producers to come up with a fun, entertaining segment that's going to help their reader, or, you know, their either viewers or their readers or whatever. And we come up with a fun segment together. And the goal of that is to help their viewers. But then also there's a kickback for me that they either promote my book or my website. Amazing. So there's, yeah. So that's the difference between the two. The uh, my, uh, Jocelyn said, I missed my calling in life. And like, I should have been like a, a TV, like infomercial hype man. <laughs> you totally <laughs> need to be like the shit, the next sham. Wow, guy. Yes. I need to be out there going <laughs> sham. Wow. Wow. Let's go. Or like, exactly. I need, like, I need to be, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Billy. Uh, uh, oh gosh. What is his name? People are going to write in on this one. Like the guy who does all the commercials, like flex yeah. seal and stuff like that. Exactly. That's what I told you when I met you at FinCon. I'm like, I got <laughs> to get you on tv <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny man yeah but what an amazing like uh, amazing job an amazing life like when you were in high school or something or college did you tell yourself hey i want to be a tv spokesperson or <laughs> how how did how did you become this like i don't understand how you get to other than like randomly meeting someone and having uh, at a great time like i met you <laughs> Yeah. Like, 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 how did, how did, how do you get into this kind of line of work? Like, what were you, what were you doing before you became a TV spokesperson? Okay. So funny story is, so I was always comfortable on stage because I was a ballerina growing up. And so I danced in like, you know, a pretty good, um, ballet company, um, up until I was 16. And even with the New York city ballet, like I danced summers with them. So like I was comfortable on stage and performing, but I never thought I would be on television, you know? So I actually went to college to be a police officer, believe it or not. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. I did. I all right. love- if you had yeah. said $1 million for what I'm about to say next, like yeah. I would have probably picked like, I don't know, underwater oil no. driller <laughs> before police a police officer. officer. <laughs> my, deg- my degree is in criminal justice with a minor in forensic chemistry. <laughs> That's incredible. I did not. I wanted coming. to be a police officer and a crime scene investigator. Wow. Um, I have a fascination with the law and the legal system. And so I, I actually so I did that. And from college, I worked in a drug court system 
And so the drug court system, you take nonviolent offenders that have drug charges and you help them get into therapy and drug treatment. And then they get their charges get reduced and you help them, you know, get back into society. So I worked in a drug court for a couple of years. And then from there, I fell in love with the whole counseling aspect because I had a brother who was an addict. And so I thought, you know what, maybe I want to go into counseling. So I actually went into become a drug and alcohol counselor. And so I was drug and alcohol counselor for a couple of years. Um, I ran a teen treatment program. I ran an evening treatment program and um, I love that. And then me and my husband at the time um, were now divorced, but me and my husband at the time decided to start having children. And so I quit that and I was a stay at home mom for a couple of years. And then I decided that I wanted to make a little extra cash. And so I started selling Mary Kay. And I got the pink Cadillac within 10 months of selling <laughs> nice. oh, <yeah. laughs> selling um, Mary Kay. And then the pink Cadillac got repoed <laughs> because I quit. Um, so that was an interesting story to get that like towed away in front of my house. Oh, yeah, um, on. You can't say that's an interesting story okay, and so not I tell the go story. Back to this. <laughs> so I had won the pink Cadillac and it's sitting in my driveway and I decided I wanted to quit the company. Right. So I called them up. I said, OK, I'm quitting. I know you need to come take the car back. Right. And so I'm like, can you meet me at a gas station? Cause I was so embarrassed. Like, Oh, cause you didn't want your neighbors to see the see car the, being towed away. Right. Right. I'm like, can I meet you at a gas station or like drop it off somewhere? And they're like, no, we need to come to your house. And I'm like, you know, this is just like torture. Like you're doing this on purpose. Right. Listen, listen, I, I, quit. I, I, let's <laughs> listen to this. So when me and Jocelyn, we quit our jobs and we had, we had downsized into this house that had a small, mortgage so that we could quit our job sooner. Right. So the same thing happened. Like we bought this house, which is like, we were like, we were at the height of our life. We had just sold a company. We bought this amazing house with this 40 acre piece of land and this big lake behind us and all this stuff. But the day we were doing all this, a realtor comes up, puts a sign in front of the thing. And then I'm outside talking to him. And then a state trooper, who's a really good friend of mine, I used to coach football with pulls up and I go over and talk to him. And then I get in the car with the trooper because I wanted to come show him my new house. So I jump in the, <laughs> and he's like, in the back, it's open. And I jumped in the back seat. So I, so here I am, <laughs> real estate house coming into the yard, getting in a state trooper car, getting drove away. I can't imagine what my neighbors thought that yeah, day. Yeah, they were like, Oh, Same thing Shane. with you, like, like you're getting your car towed. What's going on over there? I mean, exactly. So we tried to get him to do that. And so I couldn't even walk downstairs to give the tow truck driver the keys. I made my my husband at the time do it. I was like, you, Mark, you need to go give him the keys. So <laughs> not only did a tow truck driver came, they brought like one of those like flatbed trucks. I was I heard it coming down the street and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> It was like one of those ones that they Which put takes like twice as long to get it out of there. No, right? it was like one of those ones they put like like 10 trucks on. It was oh, like, no. Like, it's a like one of the huge ones. Oh, my. And God. so they, you know, the beeping and every it's like right as everybody's coming home from work and everybody's looking at, you know, so to make matters worse, the car finally goes on the truck. And I, you know, I talk about this story in my book that I wrote, The Recovering Spender. And, and the humiliation that I felt because that was like at a peak of when I was in debt. So this was part of my like debt journey of like humiliation. So they tow the car away and all of these teenage boys are on their skateboards because they had just gotten home from school and they like attach themselves to the trunk, like the, the back bumper of the, <laughs> of, <laughs> of the great. truck. And they're screaming like, Whoa! like oh all the way gosh. down the road. And I was just like, God, there's got to be a message in this, but I'm just not quite sure what it is yet. You know, like I was humiliated. So anyway, that was the pink Cadillac story. What, and that like, was, what so, was that like what sparked you? Like I'm getting out of debt. This is ridiculous. That was what, like, yeah, that was like the beginning of my, I need to get out of debt story. And um, so from there I learned like how to cut all my bills. I learned how to save money on groceries. I started teaching like grocery saving seminars at church because I was like, you know, I had like no money to spend on groceries. So I was like couponing and meal planning. And that turned into me starting my website in 2009. And that turned into new segments reaching out to me, which turned into like consumer reports, reading one of my articles, which turns into Good Morning America, doing this and that. 
And then once I got some, so like, you're an accidental hits, TV star. That's what it I is. I am. So. But then yep. I started seeing the power of television, and that's when I started getting strategic with it. Yeah, so interesting. Um, interesting. So accidental, yeah. But then accidentally okay, on purpose. <laughs> accidentally on purpose. Then I'm like, hmm, okay, let's make a living out of this. So when you when you started your blog, was it mm -hmm. to okay, so you get out you get out of debt, you start teaching at church. Was that more like, okay, well, this is clearly working for people at church. This is clearly working for me. I want to tell more people in the world about this, or was it more like a blog to like collect your thoughts and just kind of work through like your debt free journey, like what started the like when you started the blog, what was the purpose in it just to help people or to help yourself? It was to help people because I I had been teaching these meal planning and couponing seminars. Mm. And when I started getting more phone calls from other churches, I couldn't keep up with the demand of oh, how many people wanted them. And isn't so that thought, funny oh, how that works? Yeah, I thought, you know? oh, I'll just start a website. Did I know how to start a website? No, but I had taken like two coding classes in college as like prerequisites. So I thought like I knew how to code <laughs> a expert enough. <laughs> I, I'll just, I knew I'll just how to code a, a little bit. And uh, did you did you use WordPress when you first started out or what did you use? I did. did you, I did yeah, actually. Yeah. So my brother in law, he actually was a programmer. So he helped me like learn how to set up WordPress and get a self hosted site and all of that. I think my very first one was like a blog blog spot, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, these these kids these days starting these, these online businesses, they don't, they don't realize how good they got it with their clicky funnels and their kajabis and all these things. It's Seriously. just so point and click now. It's so easy. Seriously. And, uh, I remember um, one time we crashed our website in like the first month <laughs> and I was just looking up going, I have no idea why that happened. And I'm going to bed. Yeah. And I have <laughs> I just no didn't idea have a website for like three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no idea like, how to call fix customer it. service. Get my website back up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah was I the mean, first we, go ahead. Go ahead. At FinCon, I, you know, I felt like a dinosaur there. Like <laughs> they've been around for like ever. And these kids and they're on TikTok and they're like, so how does a website work? And I'm like, <laughs> I made my whole living on TikTok. I what? just make one minute videos and it yeah, works I'm great. Like, what do you mean? How does a website work? Like, <laughs> exactly. <you know>? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Someone it's, told me the other day too. They were like, uh, they're like, yeah, I've stopped making YouTube. It takes too long. I'm like, what do you what did you do on YouTube? I used to make 10 minute videos. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like people like to learn things. Why would you just stop doing that? And he's like, because I can dance on my TikTok account. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, I don't want to dance, so I'm not going to dance on my TikTok. Account. Right. <laughs> That's gonna do something else <laughs> different. Who, who was the first TV uh, spot that reached out to you? Like I, I'm always fascinated by the progression of these things, how things snowball. Um, I, uh, Jocelyn and I have this theory like it's not about being in the right place at the right time. It's about putting yourself in the right place so that you can be uh -huh. in the right place at the right time. Like you started a blog, like same thing, like we started a blog and then uh, we had a couple people ask us to be on their podcast. So we went on their podcast, but then mm -hmm. bigger people asked to be on our podcast. Then Forbes asked us to do an interview. Like it's, it's crazy how fast yep. they spiral. Um, so you, you did that. You did the blog. And then like, who was the first TV station that reached out to you? So I did. I did local for many, many years. I pitched local media and, you know, I, I don't teach people how to get in the media because I mean, I probably could start a business doing it, but I'm just too, I just don't have enough time in the day to for do sure. stuff like that. But I think, I mean, I help you, I help, I help friends, you know, learn how to do that. But for me, I'm always teaching people like get put, position yourself locally. Like everybody wants national. It's like, okay, well, what do you, nobody's going to have you on national. If you know how to do local, like you got to, mm -hmm. it's a skill. You have to learn how to do this. And so I did a ton of local, got really good on local. And then, um, one of our local shows is kind of like a daytime kind of like talk show. Like, you know, you would think like Regis and Kelly kind of thing or sure. Ryan and Kelly, how it is now. Um, and so one of the things they did there is they asked me to be their backup co-host. So I started backup co-hosting with them, which gave me host experience, which helped me, learn how to be a good guest in the host eyes. Oh, I see. Because you're like, if that guest was terrible, you're like, don't do that when I'm a guest. Right. So right. now I'm like, OK, I know how to be a good guest be, on, from a host perspective. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm like the easiest guest ever. So what's funny is this is this is this is how my brain works. So you say we say like, OK, I was accidental. Yes. However, I was actually very strategic. So I um, 
<laughs> this is funny, and I've actually never shared this before. Um, but I this is a Shane Sam show this exclusive. Is, this is right here. Exclusive. So I actually I really wanted to go on the Dr. Oz show. So I started watching. They were looking for like audience participation guests. OK, so I started watching like who they were looking for to come on the show as far as audience goes. So I applied as an audience member to be on the show. And it was like mothers. Um, it was like a Mother's Day special or something like that, where we, you know, shocking secrets that you don't share with your mom or something. I don't even know. It was something silly. So I got on the show and I knew that if I got on the show and made a connection with the producer that I could get on there as a guest, I knew it because I knew I was good on television and that's exactly what happened. So I went on as an audience participation member. I met this amazing producer who's still a friend of mine and she doesn't work at the show anymore, but, um, we got talking and I told her what I did for a living. And I told her like all the television I had done and what I could offer the show. And, you know, I would love to come on and, and share some expertise. And I shared with her a lot of like my media reel and those kind of things. And that helped me become a regular on the Dr. Oz show for a couple of years. That's unbelievable. Like talk about putting yourself in the right place to have a chance right. to be in the right place. The right, Cause you didn't even know they were going to totally pick you as the participant no. in the audience. But if you didn't show up in the audience, you would never have a chance to actually do that. Well, you know? right. But they, so what happened was, is they would fly you in as an audience member and like kind of set it up that way. <laughs> this you know is behind I mean? the curtain stuff. Like what is happening yeah. on television? It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know? So, so that's kind of how I positioned myself. And that was back in like 2013, like before I really had had any, um, national experience and, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, like nightline nightline found an article that consumer reports had done on me and consumer mm. reports found that from business insider. And so, yeah, I think for me, the game for all of this has always been, this is about personal relationships is that it's not about me trying to get something out of you. That's you right. Know, it's like, we all need to work together in this industry and it's not dog eat dog. It's not, I'm going to get something out of you and I'm not going to give anything back. You know, I've always had a give relationship with everybody. Like, like you're giving like, first clearly. Right, like, I'm giving yeah, first. Like, what yeah. can I do to help you? Because I feel like, I don't know. That's just the way I live my life in general. But um, people see that and 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 we help each other out. I mean, yeah. that's just I, the way it is. I've got I've got a mentor, uh, a good, great friend called uh, his name's Aaron Walker, and he has a great way to frame this. Be intentional with great intentions like you. Your intent is, of course, it's to give yourself opportunities. That's why like you do what you've done. You just say yes and yes. And you just keep saying yes. And you just I'll help you. I'll do it. I'll come I'll whatever. And like, but like have, but your intentions are always like serve first. Your intentions are give first. And if you're intentional with that intention, the opportunities will come. It's totally outcome independent. We're not trying to get the outcome and manipulate our way into the outcome. Uh, we're just creating opportunity by helping people by creating opportunity. It's exactly the way it is. You it's know? exactly the way it is. You got to help because yep. if, if you don't help them, they're not going to help you. Right. Right. You know, so it's the, you got to help them first. You got to go out and try to be a good guest. You got to create good content. You got to do that before you do anything else. Exactly. Know? And get to know people. You know, I think a lot of the producers that I've worked with over the years that have become personal friends of mine and I know their kids names and they know my kids names. And, you know, they're not they're not just producers. They're, you know, people, humans. People. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was. I, I'm a I'm a regular on the Rachel Ray show. And right before COVID hit, um, the hairdresser there has become a good friend of mine. And Rachel Ray does this charity auction every year where she invites people to this space and they, she auctions off all of the clothing that she's given to wear on the mm. show. And then that money goes to her charitable organization, which I believe is like her pet organization. And she invited me to go with her. And it was going to be like a night with Rachel and just hanging out and food and fun stuff. And, um, and I just thought like, like, because I focus on relationship first, mm. like I'm having this opportunity to go and like, hang out with Rachel, like in a casual setting, buy some amazing clothing. Like she's like, I, I got like a $5,000 jacket for like 25 bucks last year. Um, you <laughs> right. know, so she's my, auctioning frugal, it off for charity. my right. frugal bones are like, what, you know, I'm like so excited. Um, 
But relationship first has always been the name of the game for me. And if it and, doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Cause I feel like for me, like it'll just work out however yeah. it's supposed to. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not about that. Like I, I got, it's so funny. You say that like Joss and I, that is we've always went the extra mile for relationships. Cause that's mm -hmm. kind of what we value. Even if, even if we, there's some for things that just nothing ever comes of it, except for you've got a great friend, you know, right. like uh, I had a buddy of mine who was in a master. Well, he's my buddy. Now he, we were in Indiana and we were coming home uh, back to Southeast Kentucky from Louisville and, and him and his wife and their kids, this guy that I, I had connected with online. And I really felt like, we were cut from the same cloth. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he was actually in a mastermind with a bunch of people that I would have been honored to connect with. But it was more just like, I really felt like this guy, maybe he should be friends. They were two and a half hours north mm -hmm. of where we were going. And I text him and I'm like, hey, if we turn left up here, we can come to your house. And he thought I was like in his town. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, but I mean, when I meant left, I meant on another interstate, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And like we turn left and like, you know, like, of course, we've done some things together, but like it was just like we're just great friends now. And like our kids got to swim together. Yeah. And like that's all it, it, that's where the great things come from is when you just connect with people and you I love agree. people and you get to hang out. Um, tell me about real quick. Uh, I want to talk a lot about debt, too, because okay. that, that's an interesting thing. But um, what challenges? You know, I think a lot of people would like to do television. I think a lot of people have a great message, especially people mm -hmm. that listen to this show. They want to get their message out there. But like. Did you have a did you meet a mentor along the way or like what challenges when you first got into national television that had to be kind of nerve wracking, you know, like, I mean, I'm about to go live in front of millions of people. What is happening right now? Like, what were the challenges about just, you know, like learning how to do it or speed bumps you hit or obstacles? And did you have anybody that kind of grabbed you by the hand and said, Lauren, come over here. Let me show you something here. Like, did anything like that happen or like, how did you get past those challenges in the beginning? Yeah. So I, um, I got signed with like a boutique kind of talent agent. Um, mm. so she kind of helped me, you know, lead me along the way and give me some pointers. To be honest, one of the biggest challenges that I've always had is what to wear <laughs> like, because it's, it's challenging to figure out what to wear all the time and different things and what's going to look good on set and all of that. So I, I use rent the runway. Now I rent my clothing. Oh, that um, is amazing. That is, yeah. Oh, that's a <laughs> pro tip of the yeah. century. I might do that for my speaking events. Do I it. Never, do they have men's clothes at Rent the Runway? They, I don't know if they do. There's got to be, sure, be an equivalent I'm to that. I'm sure though. they do because I do yeah. all of my television clothing now Rent the Runway because I don't have brilliant. time. They send me four pieces. I have four outfit changes. Wow. I just don't have time. So I do that. And then I never you have just to changed the Jocelyn Sam's life. When I tell Where her, this. I'm going? going to walk out here and be like, yo, do rent you know what Lauren does for TV? That is brilliant. Yeah. I rent all of my clothing. There's my ninja tip. Um, and uh, for me, it was learning how each show wants you to do things different. Okay. Mm. So today show, you need to know like how to work with Hoda and Jenna. What, how do they like to do things? Um, Rachel Ray, you need to know how to work with her. Um, you know, each show has a different fling and you have to know, or a different take on things, a different way you have to approach the host. So knowing and being able to go along, like the Rachel Ray show, like you need to be able to be comfortable basically telling Rachel to be quiet and like leading her mm. and, and, and being confident enough to do that. Um, and, and leading the segment being like, okay, Rach, let's get on. You know, that makes um, me nervous thinking about it. Like, and I'm not right. a nervous guy, but that's <laughs> Rachel freaking Ray. Like, right? She's I mean, amazing. She's an yeah. amazing person. And she just needs sometimes like to get reined in and pulled along. And that's, you know, that's <laughs> yep. just okay. That's amazing. Um, and so I think learning that, um, the very first time I did the Today Show was a New Year's Day show and that my website freaking I mean, I got slammed. My website was not ready for it. Um, I didn't crash, but it was it was pretty slow. So I think learning how to capitalize on those appearances like, OK, mm. so now I'm on the Today Show this day. Now, how do I do that? You know, how do yeah. I reach those people afterwards? So one of the little tips that I do is the day that I'm airing um, a segment, 
I will put up a Facebook ad and target, you know, the show's Facebook page. That's smart. With an ad. Yeah, um, that's really, really like, Did you smart. see me on the show today? Blah, blah, blah. Here's a little bit more about me and try to, you know, get them that way or on Instagram. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So, you know, those have been some challenges to be honest. Like one of, one of the biggest challenges for me on a personal side was when my kids got older, they wanted to stop being in the spotlight. So, um, my 16 year old son doesn't want pictures of him on national television anymore. So when there's family pictures, you know, he doesn't want to be in them. He doesn't want to, he's kind of an introvert. So interesting respecting that. And then you know, when I went through my divorce, like Mark was a very big part of the business. Um, we had a podcast together. He came to a lot of events together. And when we went through the divorce, I mean, you Google my name and there's family pictures and media segments of us. And so that was a hard thing to navigate in the public spotlight. You know, even when the 700 club reached out to me a couple of weeks ago, they're like, do you and your husband want to come on? I was like, well, we got divorced <laughs> four years ago. Oh, um, no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, but I know another great couple, you know, um, it's, it's kind of a trade, right? Like the uh, the public thing is weird. My kids are getting uh, they're 10 and 12 now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm constantly, especially Isaac, because the situation that happened with him is the catalyst for what brought us to today. Right. And it's such a hard thing because that's my story. And, mm -hmm. but it's also his story. And like, right. there is a strange overlap there that you got to be careful with because as public people, like when, you know, we have to, the only way we can lead and inspire people is to share and be mm -hmm. transparent. Right. And, um, I can, I've, I talk to him every, I check in with him probably re really about quarterly at this point. Like, Hey, you sure you still want me to do this? You sure you still want me to tell the story? You sure this is okay. And I want to, I'm trying to, and you, you don't know, like, is he just saying, okay, because dad wants to and mom wants to, or is, it, right. or is he actually doing it? You know, and even in counseling, like, well, he does a counselor once a month just to, you know, sort through the things in life. And it's like, we're just, are you sure this is okay? Is this, is this a good thing? It's, it's really hard to navigate sharing your, your, especially locally. I'll tell you what's weird. Online's one thing. Like, you can kind of be like, yeah, there's still videos of me with somebody up there, right? Mm -hmm. But man, when you go to church and somebody comes up to you, and they're like, gosh, I heard you tell that story on your podcast last week. And you're like, good. I want people in my church to know that story. You know, like it's really yep. hard to make that trade of I need to do this to help people. But there's consequences. Like I lose 10 to 20 percent of my personal life going forward because it's this is the true. way it is. You know, it's very true. And it gets it gets harder when your kids get older, because <laughs> there's been many times where um, my my son has had. I mean, he's 16. So he's a junior in high school. He's had his buddies sleep over and I've come downstairs and they're all watching my YouTube channel. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. and they're like, dude, your mom's so hot. Like, and, and, you know, <laughs> like Andrew, he can't handle it. Oh, my, she's on like, TV. Whoa, yeah, man. She, like, your mom's on TV. Your mom's famous. Like everybody thinks you have a famous mom. And, and he is like very, um, he's he a doesn't very want like, the limelight. he doesn't. You know, he really doesn't. And my daughters love that, but my son does not. And so mm -hmm. I've put him in this situation where almost like he he doesn't regret it. Like he thinks it's cool. But at the same time, he's like, I just don't like just don't put me on. I don't want to be on television. I don't want to I don't want TV crews coming to the house. I don't want to be a part of it. And I'm like, I have to respect that. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so he doesn't really go on many social media posts. He doesn't want to be a part of it. And so people, a lot of times are like, you have a son. I'm like, yes, I do. I, but he just doesn't want to be a part of it. So what is he interested in? Like, what, cause like Isaac is very the same way. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think he minds the public, but like as much right now, he probably will later. I'd say he'll probably, there might be a point maybe where he does that. He likes to like, Isaac loves to edit. He loves technology, he loves to be mm -hmm. in his room and tinkering and things like that. Like, does you, what does your, does your son like to do those things? Is he involved with anything else like that? Or is he, he just loves, like, he likes like, um, building, com he loves building computers. Like he'll take and build computers and keyboards and that kind of stuff. Interesting. Um, yeah. And you know, it's funny is me and him, um, have been watching um Jason's uh stock trading uh video. Oh, Jason Brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brown report. Jason's been on the podcast. Yeah. 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 So so I joined um Jason's community and me and him have been sitting and watching um 
his videos together because he's really interested in stock trading. So that's incredible. Yeah. That's so we've been incredible. watching that together and he really, he doesn't want to go to college. He wants to get into um, carpentry. And so we've talked about getting into real estate investing together where I'm mm -hmm. the investor and he's the person, you know, who's fixing up the houses. So we've talked about that. So he's got more, definitely more of an entrepreneurial mindset, but not the public facing. He's more yeah, the, the backside the of the backside kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. But good job, yep. mama. You've been doing a good job with that boy. Like, cause I, <laughs> I listen, there's a lot of people that would be like, no, this is the brand. And if you don't become part of the brand and I can't show this part of the brand, you're going to mess everything. But you didn't do that. And I yeah. think that's a testament to you and how good of a mother you are, because yeah. that, that that's something that is hard. It's really hard when you, especially when you've built the brand kind of one way and you have to pivot. And that fear in the back of your stomach is if I change one thing, this whole domino will fall and I will not mm -hmm. be able to market myself and do this and do that. But really your story just shifted. So the story it's, your, shifted. it's your story, you know? Yep. Yep. And you know, I think that was, that was hard though. Like to go from being married and like my whole story was like living the American dream, like this perfect marriage and four kids and yeah. out of debt. And then all of a sudden I go through a divorce and you know, I only have my kids half the time. And how do you pivot and change a brand and I took two years off of working completely. Like I couldn't, it took me, it was like, I had to grieve mm. this brand Yeah. and I had to figure out how I was going to move forward. And it took me a while, like therapy. And I, I mean, but the beauty of that Shane is that I built up the brand so strong is that it financially supported me that entire two years without me having to work at all. Incredible. That's incredible. Um, you and know, so I could heal myself and I could heal with my kids and I could, you know, do, do what I needed to do to get back on my feet without having to worry about like working. That that's an entrepreneurial thing that we all need to navigate and worry about ahead of time is like mm -hmm. as, as entrepreneurs, especially people like us who podcast and speak on stages and go on TV and things like that. Like you create an identity. Mm -hmm. And when, if you are so tied up in that identity, if one thing changes, you can really get crushed and mourn it. Like that word mourn uh, when yeah. Jocelyn, Jocelyn was the elementary librarian, like straight up. Like that's what she was called. Like she's the elementary librarian. When mm -hmm. she sold that company, she lost her identity and yep. she, gr she mourned it like the loss of a child, that identity. Um, depression is crazy. Like how you say that you said that word mourn. Cause I was like, yeah, like I totally see what you, what, what happened there because it's not just your personal life all of a sudden that went away. It's your professional identity as well. And like, mm -hmm. you have to rebuild that. So yeah. We got to be was, careful not to attach ourselves to it. You know, it's so true. And it's so easy to do it because we, I don't know about you, but for many years, I, I live, breathed. I mean, everything was my brand, you know? Yes. And so <laughs> I'm wearing my t-shirt right now. Lauren. Yes, what are you talking right? about? <laughs> I would wear brand colors when I was taking pictures and like, <laughs> You know, our I house was, has brand colors in the yeah, living room. Like my yeah. background in my office is like brand colors, like still, but I had to learn. And this is, this was a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn how to detach myself from that. And so mm. now, you know, I'm a single mom. I have four kids. I work my butt off, you know, 10 months out of the year. And I take summers completely off and I detach in the summer. And I bought a camper and I have kayaks and I have a boat and I spend the entire summer off with my children Amazing. and, and I don't work. So you don't do any TV in the summers at all. You just, mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm just going to come nope. back in the fall and wow, that's I don't great. do anything that because dispels a myth right there of, I have to do this forever every week or it will go I away. Yeah. It, you killed, can't do that. it literally killed me. It, I believe it killed my marriage, you know, mm. um, because we weren't investing in each other and I needed, I need that separation from Lauren, the entrepreneur TV business person and mom. I just, I, I personally need it. I cannot hustle 24 seven. I just realized that like I did that. I did the hustle. And that, that was actually my talk at FinCon was I did the hustle. I did the business. I did, you know, my business was at the top income wise, um, publicity wise, you know, I was on TV like twice a month when I went through my divorce, that was like mm. the top of my career. 
And I had to regroup and like, okay, whoo, that was a doozy, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I didn't see that coming. Where didn't did that come that from? Coming. Right. And, um, and go through that in the public spotlight. So I'm still doing the things in my business and I'm still making really good money, but at what expense at yeah. this point? You know what I mean? So yeah. I work my butt off today still, but I take summers off and I, and I, that's just something that I just put a hard stop to. Like, I want to be with my kids. That's incredible. Summer. What a great so. example. I'm taking summers off next year. I'm telling yeah, Josh, we're going to taking summers off. I yeah. have it set up on autopilot. I mean, we know yeah, how to do if, it. Your, your business can totally, yeah. Like it's the reason we can travel and speak and hang out and do the things. Like most of y'all have the business going passively anyway. You just don't realize it. And it's just, it's like a shift in finances, maybe where you make money here and spread it out here. And there is some discipline to be able to do those kind of things, mm -hmm. but it's all, it's all available. Like so speaking of finances, great transition mm -hmm. there. <laughs> <laughs> how, how how did how did being debt free especially right and I, and I I always stress this like I don't know how you feel about this but like debt to me it's always consumer debt everybody gets mad like Dave Ramsey debt free they freak out on me like no listen consumer debt free maybe not leverage debt free I'm, for all you investors out there I'm not hating on you but like there is a there is a freedom that comes with being debt free in your life and and mm -hmm. and and keeping your finances in order to allow you these runways to when life knocks you off path you can take some time to relax about it and i really think being debt free like we have a paid off house like we're debt free and like i don't feel like i can lose sometimes mm -hmm. like no matter how bad things get but like how did debt free being debt free as a foundation of all of these amazing things you've created in your life um, really propel you to that and set you up for success? Like when you had the challenge with your marriage or when you wanted to start going on TV or when you wanted to take summers off, like why is debt free such an important uh, part of that? And I love your, your Facebook is my new, is one of my new favorites of anyone I follow now, because <laughs> you're just always throwing stuff out there. Like I saved this much money. I did like, you're like showing the tips, right? <laughs> like all the time. So like, why, why is that so important to you? Well, it gives you options. You know, mm. it's like, if you have all this debt hanging over your head, you're, you're like in prison, you know? So it gives you options. I feel like to be able to do different things. And, you know, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, I have a, I have kind of like a different feeling about debt than, a, than a lot of people, because I feel like sometimes when you're in debt, a lot of people shame you for being in debt. Like, like you need to be debt free and blah, 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 and you're like, I, I just can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just really wanted a pizza and yes. I wanted to go to movies just, just to take a break. Exactly. Right. And it's like, you know what, just take the dang break. And then, mm. you know, go work a little bit harder later. So I don't know. There's so much shame when it comes to debt free living. I feel like this shame culture. And that's really like the whole hard money talk show that I'm doing is kind of to break that shame culture on debt free um, living. But when you I think you're the first person I've ever heard to say that, like, really? I'm just in there. Listen, I'm I've, I've been in the entrepreneur game for a decade. I've been debt the, the, the Dave Ramsey debt free stuff back when I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that like that. That is a very unique perspective on that. That like I felt hopeful when you said mm -hmm. that for people and like it like I wish somebody had said that to me when I had sixty thousand dollars in debt or something crazy back in the day, because I did feel so much shame driving to work every day when I was right. listening to debt stuff. Like that's an amazing perspective. Well, okay. So think about it this way, Shane, like you have $60,000 of debt and all people are doing is yelling at you to get out of debt. It's like, mm. how is that going to help you? Right? Yeah. Like yeah. let's, there, there's this great quote that I love. And it says, instead of pulling people out of the river, why don't we go upstream and find out why they're falling in? Oh, and so, that's the Drop whole, the, that's the tweetable for this episode. Yeah. I know right there. Right there. <laughs> so that's the whole goal of, of my, of my mission, you know, for, for 2022 is why are, why are we getting into debt? Like digging into topics like mental health and overspending and, you know, shame and abuse, like financial abuse and mm. addictions and why you were raised. Like how many people do I know that are in jobs that they hate because they're trying to prove to their dads that they can actually make something of themselves, you know, yeah. kill, literally killing themselves, overworking yeah. too hard. You know, those are the kind of topics. And 
So there, there is a lot of shame in the debt culture, you know, of like, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's all good stuff. But, you know, I was talking with a girlfriend of mine the other day and she's like, Lauren, I've been in debt for so long. And all I want to do is go on a vacation with my husband. That's Mm. all I want to do. So what do I do? And I said, if you're on your deathbed, do you say, I wish I would have taken my vacation or I wish I would have paid off my debt? Mm. And she said, I would have said, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I took the vacation. I said, then that's what you do. Yeah. That's an incredible perspective. I, I, I remember Jocelyn's always kind of been that way. She's been like, I'm, I'm extreme. I'm in a man of extremes, Lauren, mm-hmm. when I, I when relate. I go, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. I, I feel you. We're working out. Our souls are definitely friends. Yes. And like, and I, 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 when I go into something, I'm like all in, like, if I'm like, mm-hmm. we're going to get out of debt, I'm like, you get two beans. That's right. what you get I'm today. selling the house, the cars, the camper, oh, I, oh, everything. We, we sold the house. We did. I've done that. <laughs> and I'm like, but like Jocelyn has always been like, look, you don't know if we're going to be dead in a year. And sometimes we need to go out and do something with the kids. And that's just the way it's going to be. And I'm like, so all it does is change the target of when you get out of debt. That's really right. it. Like, right. And um, I'm so glad that I've had that perspective. And I, and I love your perspective of just the no shame. We're all just working out. Today is the day. And you know, if you do something today, don't worry, the next two or three, you can take it off and you'll be, you're not going on vacation every week. Right. Right. So you might as well take the, the vacation well listen Lauren. this has been fun i i love this i i have the best job in the world because i just get to hang <laughs> I out feel the it's, same thing it's so uh, fun it's so ridiculous like uh, like is this even real life that we got to hang out today and, and more but we could probably talk for hours but i want people definitely to connect with you uh, online so tell everybody um again where where can they go to listen to hard money talks where can they uh, find you uh, online on your website and is there any social media or anything you want to connect with people today yeah so i mean you they, they can go to laurengroupman.com and find everything that we talked about you know i have a youtube channel um i have you know a podcast and instagram and facebook and all that kind of stuff um and then you know if people want to watch my television segments i have them all up on youtube as well um well as many as i as i can with copyright and all that kind of stuff i try yeah. to upload whatever i can um but yeah, no, this has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and being on the show. And I hope that people can, you know, learn, learn whatever. Um, oh, I know. Oh, they're going to learn. I'm telling you, I, I know at the end of a podcast when I'm going to get some messages on social and all you people, <laughs> you go at me and Lauren on social media. But I know some people are going to be sitting there going pow, pow, all through this one, too. So thank you for being on the show, Lauren. Thank you. All right, y'all, that wraps up my conversation with Lauren Grootman. I told you she was awesome. I told you that was going to be fun, man. You got to listen to me now. I had an absolute blast talking to Lauren. I have learned so much from her in the short time we have known each other, and it is an honor to introduce her to you here today. Make sure you check out all of her stuff on social media. We'll have links to that in the show notes. Go tag her on Instagram or Twitter. Tell her you heard her right here on the Shane Sam Show. And start paying attention to her content. It is some of the best content that I've seen on getting out of debt. I know it's going to help you. I know you're going to love it. And hey, if you love the Shane Sam show, thank you so much for listening. Listen, we are moving up the rankings. Got a message from one of the podcast apps we're on. We are top 25 in entrepreneurship, top 50 in business. We are moving up the charts. I was looking back at our guest list over the last year. Man, we have had in the last year, year and a half, we've done this show some of the best guys. I've never seen a guest list, man. I'm so blessed, so fortunate, so lucky. I just feel so privileged to be able to talk to these amazing people and to bring these conversations to you every single week. We need you to help us keep growing. We need you to help us get even bigger and better guests so that you get to listen to these conversations. You get to have fun and you get what you need to take your life and your business to the next level. So if you want to help us grow the show, do me a favor, go over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review, type in that paragraph. Tell me what you think about the show. Tell me who your favorite guest was. Maybe I'll have them back on. I do read every single one of those reviews and they give me that motivation to keep producing great content for you every single episode. And hey, if you loved the podcast today, copy that link. Link. Go share it on your social media network of choice. Tag me and Lauren in it. We'll give you a retweet. We'll give you a follow back. And if you got a friend that you think would love the Shane Sam show, tell them about it. Let's go grassroots, y'all. Maybe next time you're at dinner or lunch, grab their phone and say, I'm going to subscribe you to this podcast. You got to hear this. I'm going to download a few onto your phone. And as always, the Shane Sam show is brought to you by flippedlifestyle.com. 
FlippedLifestyle.com is where my wife, Joss, and I host our other podcast, the Flipped Lifestyle Podcast, and where we host the Flipped Lifestyle Community, where we help family-focused entrepreneurs find and use their God-given passions, the God-given knowledge that they've learned along the way, their God-given experiences and wisdom. We help people take that information, turn it into an online business, replace their income, become and stay self-employed so they can change their family's future. If you'd like to learn how to start, build, and grow an online business, maybe find yourself some freedom like Lauren found on her summers off. That's exactly what we do over at FlippedLifestyle.com. You can start with our program for free right now today. All you have to do is go to Flipped, F-L-I-P-P-E-D, Lifestyle.com slash free, and you can check that out, and we can help you create an online income so that you can find freedom in your time and money for your family. That's all the time we have for this week, y'all. Until next time, take action, be consistent, be prolific, be relentless. Pick up your stone, cast it out upon the waters cause many ripples. We'll see you then.